Um, talking about the, the recording of this, uh, of White Chalk, it's a very interesting sounding record for a lot of different reasons, but um, I was interested to, to find out a bit more about where you kind of where you've recorded it because you've said that that the place that you record things in or the place that you create things is um, very important to you mm. Um, mm. where did you record this and and how was it important to you well the actual recording of the record was all done in london um and i chose a studio that i was very comfortable in because it was definitely not at all like a studio it was actually it was called Flood's Bedroom. <laughs> and obviously I was working with Flood. He calls your, it... Your producer, Flood. Yeah. yeah. He calls it his bedroom. It's just... It's a street further down the back of his house and on a different street. It's a room not much bigger than what we're sitting in, a very small room with everything in one room. So the controls with Flood at it, the drum kit, everything, the which, couch. <laughs> which is kind of against... Um, usual theory for recording isn't it because yeah. people tend to try and separate everything so you can control things yeah. a bit more but you see that's why i love flood because he uh he pays total disregard to what how the way things should be done and he's he's always been somebody that enab i feel enables the person he's working with to find the emotional territory that the song needs and that's got nothing to do with how things should be done mm. you know if i end up needing to lie down on my back singing under the control desk for a song that's what we do you know so you must have an enormous amount of trust with the people that you work with for that that kind of process yes and um pe some people have often asked oh why do you work with the, the same types of people then if you're trying to pursue new ground i actually find that to pursue artistic ground in a new place i like to feel that a i'm with people that will understand what I'm trying to do and be that I feel that relaxed enough ar around to be that vulnerable because yes for this record I could have chosen to work with some totally a different producer different musicians but I I knew in myself I, I had all the ingredients in myself I knew I, in how to make it new I didn't need to bring in new people to do that I actually needed people that I knew could do what my vision was mm. and I I know and love and trust everybody that I work with on this record um, and they know me very well and so it sort of it gets to a place where you speak the same language and um, I could very easily tell them what I wanted to do. What is that language? And it's sometimes not in words you know it, Flood and I would so often not have to say the thing and he'll just be doing it you know if we're if I know it the, the vocals not happening I'll say, um, yeah, I think I should try it maybe upstairs without the f phones and listening down. He goes, it's set up, it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I go, okay, right. <laughs> Some would consider that a bit spooky, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is, um, so when you say that you you try and prepare yourself to be vulnerable enough to get, like, an emotional truth out of it, I guess, mm. do you have an idea of what, what that's going to be? I mean, do you have a... a a template for what the emotion is supposed to be? Um, sometimes I might, in my manifesto type way, write down what I think the template for a song should be emotionally, but always, al almost always, 98% of the time, the song takes you somewhere totally else. And that's, that's actually the vulnerable place there. It's not that I feel vulnerable trying when I'm trying to inhabit the emotional space at all, but to have the courage to follow where a song's taking you when it's taking you somewhere you hadn't planned for at all, that's the vulnerable part. That's the scary part. So whereabouts on this record can you really hear that? All of it? Gosh. Um, the Devil, for instance, was extremely hard. We nearly didn't have that song. We spent five months trying to get that song. And we got it in the last week of recording at the last at the very end and we tried it and tried it i thought that wasn't going to make it and that was horrible feeling because i loved the song and i could not find how it wanted to be and everything i tried sounded contrived sounded uh, like something i'd done before sounded all wrong for the emotion of the words you know and, and so that was one example um and another way would be um let me think. I'm going through the song lists in my head. Uh, 
The piano was a very difficult song to record. I could not find the vocal. We had, we had the music and it was beautiful. Again, it took a long, long time to find how that song wanted to be musically. We may have actually recorded it completely three or four times in a totally different way to what it is now. And, I, and then finally, when we found the music to how it should be now, I couldn't sing it again. I didn't know how to sing it, you know, and that's those those uh, the performance of those vocals, the devil and the piano, are entirely different to what um, I, I thought they would be. Entirely different. The devil actually, we ended up flying in my demo vocal on right. top, so you know I had no idea we would end up doing that, mm. and it worked. So I've also read that you um, are very not only is the space sort of important to you, but that you are responsive to the actual instruments and the the, the things that occupy the space, if you like, uh, you know, like that you don't like, I guess, the, the computer-based plastic style of, uh, of music making device. You prefer things like broken harps and old 1930s mm. pianos that are slightly out of tune. Mm. Why is that? Um, uh I'm a very tactile creature. I mean, I would say creature because I, it's probably something to do with the fact that I grew up in a farming community with animals around. That was our livelihood. And um, I'm used to, to, to touch and earth and dirt and, <laughs> and animals. And I feel nothing from, I mean, let alone a computer, but I feel nothing from even plastic keyboards I just feel nothing I don't if I and if you give you give me an instrument that's made of wood and cat gut and skin and um, you know all or you give me an old instrument you give me an old guitar you give me a an early 50s Gibson guitar and I I I'm I it plays me that's how it feels I just bring out this what what's in the instrument it just comes through and um, give me a plastic keyboard or a computer key to, to play me I could do nothing yeah. um, so speaking of being back home in the dirt and stuff do you um, do you like to get out and get muddy where you live uh, I, yes I, I do all the time I, I, I love being outside and um, it's just very natural for me I, I, I actually find hotels like this really peculiar when you can't open a window I very quickly feel like a caged animal and um, no I, I, I'm outside a lot of the time it must be a kind of strange duality that you live then if you're hanging out in a little tiny village and then suddenly find yourself in well places like this in, mm. in big cities it is but I, I thrive on it artistically I yeah. think to to be transplanted into what's very unfamiliar uh, the unknown can bring about in, in great stimulation for for everything in life not just artwork but just human human being work you know being a human being and to force oneself into um yeah unfamiliar territory it brings out lots of good things you talked about being a um a very tactile creature in things and i know that you've done lots of sculpture as well is is your approach to you know releasing things in sculpture the same way as you release things in music is it exactly exactly i and I don't know that every artist is the same, but maybe they are, but I, I find it's always a process of removing what's not needed. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it, I always begin with too much information, whether it's um, too many materials or too much paint or too much, uh, too many pencil marks, too many possibilities of words or verses or any, and, and you slowly take it away, take it away the words, take, take away that's not needed and I hone it and hone it until it's as simple as it can be um, and that's always been the way that I've worked in fact I should talk to more people about it if that's the same for them um, the exciting thing about this record for us in Australia of course is that it has a little a little teeny bit of Australia in it in some ways and that is some um, your drummer Jim White who mm. um, many people would know from the very fine Melbourne band the Dirty Three why did you choose a um, well a very lovely bloke like that well, I've I've known Jim for what, 11, 12 years. Um, back in '95, the Dirty Three supported us on a large part of of my To Bring You My Love tour, and I got to know them all really well then. Um, and since that time, I mean, every night I would I would watch the Dirty Three, and I would be utterly hypnotised by Jim. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
he is the most drum undrummer like drummer I've ever come across. He, he's not a drummer. I, I look, I think of Jim as a dancer or a painter or a poet or a, you know, he's just, he's beautiful to watch. He's just the most graceful dancer you've ever seen behind a kit. And he's like a voice. He's not like a drummer. He's like a voice. And I have wanted to, to work with him on my material since then. And I kept thinking, this is not the right material, not the right material. And I wasn't in the right place because to play with somebody like Jim, you have to be open enough to let the song go anywhere because he never does the same thing twice. It can't be, it can't be on a song that is hemmed in by, I want it to be like this. It, it had to be with songs that were free flowing could go anywhere for his style. And this was the first time I had a batch of songs like that. Do you, um, do you shun modern technology? Um, not, not to an extreme point. Um, I like to work with tape mm. uh, when I'm recording. Why? For the sound. Um, do you think you really can hear it? Yeah, absolutely. In what way? Uh, warmth, depth, richness, um, and it adds something. It adds something more. So it's always the excitement of what's it going to add to that. Right. Digital can record exactly what you've done perfectly. But I, one well, thing I would love about tape is the mystery of what it's going to give you back because it will be slightly different. To <laughs> 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 so I, I love that. Um, and I don't have I don't have a computer, but I'm not Actually, I'm not averse to getting one. You know, I, I'm not I'm not that strict that I would. I do have a mobile phone um, as of two years, so I was a little bit late coming to them. But no, I, I think it can be a wonderful thing. I um, I just haven't felt the need to dive into it wholeheartedly yet. Look, thank you so much for talking to us um, here at Triple J. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. It's been very nice talking to you. Thank you.